Good morning, Spirit of Life. Oh, you guys are so good. I just want to welcome everybody to the Spirit of Life family because we are just one big happy family. So if this is your first day, understand family hugs, family talks, family just lets you feel like that you are right where you belong. Amen? You can be seated a minute. I see everybody looking at me like, what do you got for me today? Well, the word of God says in Matthew 18 and 19, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's many more than two or three in this house today. So I want to welcome my Lord and Savior here. I want to praise him. I want to worship him. I want to magnify him. Because according to the word of God, where two or more gather together in my name. Are we here in the name of Jesus? Let's hear amen. Amen. If we're here in the name of Jesus, then we need to worship him because we are in the house of the Lord and he is here. He is here. He is, he's here. Well, I don't feel him. Well, maybe you just need to welcome him. Sorry, it's true. You're not going to find me at your house unless you welcome me in. Did you welcome God today? We have to welcome him in. He's here today. And he wants us to welcome him. You know, whenever I go to pray, I want to feel God in the midst. I want to know that he's hearing me and he's listening. And I'm here to tell you today, he's listening to you today. I just feel such an urgency in the sense of we need to earnestly pray for God to just fill us to overflowing in him. Our life becomes repetitive. And God's not in repetitive. He wants to know he's important. Where two or more gather together, there he is in the midst. So he's in the midst of our prayers. He's in the midst of our lives. And he's in the midst of our whatever, put it in there. Our attitude, our aggravation, our complaining, our gossiping, our he's in the midst. He knows it all. But today he says, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. If there's something going on with you physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, God says, I'm here today for you. Well, I don't feel him. Well, reach out and touch him because he's there. Reach out and touch him because he's there. God's in the house. And he's going to touch you. But what he wants is you to reach out. He said to Peter on the water, he said, come unto me. He called him. He's calling you today to reach out and touch him. He's in the midst. It's a choice we make. Will you stand? I know God's here today, and I just want to reach out today and ask. This weekend is our ladies' retreat. And upwards of 60 women, 
I know that's not the exact count, so I'm just giving you a high number. I know we've got 52 plus some day ladies, so um, it's a lot. But we're going away for the weekend, and the theme for the weekend is more. We want more from God. We want him to fill us and give him everything he's got, everything he wants. Change us, make us, renew us, refresh us. May we come back with a fire that is so exuberant that th we splash on every one of you and you get ignited. But I need you to pray for this weekend. I am asking you to pray with us for this weekend. Because the enemy wants nothing more than to say, oh my goodness, you can't go. No, I'm going. I'm going. No matter what, I'm going. Now, let us bind together and pray that God touches each and every one of us in a great way this week. And this weekend is blessed by the power of God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I love you, Lord, for this day. I praise you for the opportunity you give us to come into your house and worship you. Lord God, I thank you, Father God, that you ensure us in your word that where two or more gathered together, there in the midst you are also. So, Lord, I welcome you here. Father, I welcome you here. Holy Spirit, I welcome you here. Lord, I thank you for the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that you love us more than anything. And that whatsoever we ask in faith, believing, Lord, we shall receive. Lord, I ask, Father God, that each and every one that's here, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord, in a great way. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, Lord God, whatever the need is, Father, that you reach down and you touch them today. God, you're in the house. Oh, Lord Jesus, we worship you today. Father, I just ask that you would touch the praise team. And Lord, for pastor. Lord, you have anointed him and appointed him to preach the word of God. And I ask, Father God, that each and every one that is here today will open their hearts and minds to receive what you have for them. For, Lord, you are in the house, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together.
the Lord good this morning. I am so thankful to be in this house this morning. As individuals walked in, I got to witness something. I got to witness the power of God in your lives. Now, I'm not going to ask any of them to come forward. You can't see it online. But everybody in the house, look at that section right there. Everybody in the house, it's hard for you to look at yourself so you can look around. But in that one section alone, there is three new, beautiful souls. Three beautiful babies. The youngest being less than two weeks, I believe. How much? I missed it by two days. Come on now. But did you see that? That means God is still doing marvelous things. You can look over here and you can see that God is still working miracles. In a few more months, there will be another baby. In a few more months, another baby. Praise God. I mean... If you want to get pregnant, <laughs> I think this is the place to be. Amen? The glory of the Lord has shown his face upon this house. Amen? Amen. Are you thankful for the team behind me this morning? Amen. Let them know it. God bless you all. Now I want you to take a few moments and just look at the team that's half upstairs. One's here on the floor, the other upstairs, and there's others that work up there diligently in the crow's nest to make these guys sound better. They try to make me look better, and they definitely make you guys look better. <laughs> but I appreciate everyone that is faithful to serve in this house. Amen? Amen. What a blessing it is. Come on, give yourself a hand clap. Amen. You may be seated. You may be dismissed. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers if they will come and receive God's tithe and your offerings. Remember, today is also a missions offering that we'll take together. And uh, God laid it on my heart, and, and I will need some help through the other administrators of the church to remind me that in next month we will start taking those offerings separate. There's a lot to be done for the kingdom of God. Amen? And there's souls that are literally being weighed in the balance of life. And um, how many has heard of some of the awful things that has happened in our nation? Another lockdown. It just happened to one of my friends there. Their children were in lockdown because there was uh, an active individual. It wasn't necessarily an active shooter, but they were there to cause harm. And um, we just need to pray. Amen? How many need a special touch of God this morning? Come on, don't be ashamed that you just need a special touch because God is faithful. So, Heavenly Father, as we come together in our hearts... Lord, in our voices, as we speak to you through our minds, God, we claim victory because of who you are and to whom we belong. For we were bought with a price. God, you gave it all when you gave us your son. So God, let us give. Let us have generous hearts to give unto you that we may be found faithful in loving you and caring for you and doing ministry in your name. So God, bless each one. God that gives and pays their tithe, to give their offerings, to place money into the missions. God, bless them all. Bless their heart in Jesus' name. Amen.
and amen. There is no announcements this morning, but as my wife asks you, I, I want to reiterate to you to be in prayer of what next week means for this church, for the women of this church. If you've never been, I would encourage you next year because when they come back, we're going to have some testimonies and that. But when you have the opportunity for next year to go, I'd encourage you to sign up, be ready, start saving nickels and dimes right now to be able to pay for what is taking place because I know for me that I, my wife is pretty amazing and I know I talk about that. Nobody ever, don't, don't ever get upset that I love my wife. But when she comes back, she comes back even more on fire. She comes back more enlightened on what God is doing in the lives of so many. And I'm thankful for that. Amen? So this morning, it's the fourth in a series. It's closing up this series. And, and it's very important that we understand those things, if we know who Christ is in our life, if we find ourselves being connected, as I will be preaching this morning, that, that it's only through Him can we find what true power is and what true anointing is. And, and whatever you're going through, it's tough if you don't have Jesus. If you just have this pen pal mentality that you just connect to Jesus whenever you need to talk to Him or to speak to Him about what's going on in your life, you will never find what true intimacy is with Him. So this morning, I want to share with you the message entitled, If You Abide in Me, Then You Will Bear Much Fruit. See, it's the relationship that we have with who Christ is that gives us an understanding what true abundance is and the fruitfulness and the purpose and the joy of our lives. In just a moment, I will ask you to stand and we'll read God's word. But I know this morning that we can do nothing apart from God. There's nothing that we can accomplish on our own that is greater than what we can accomplish with God on our side. In the first of the series, we learned that if you know Jesus, then you know life. Forgive me. If you know Jesus, then you know life. You know what it is to live an abundant life. The second of the series was if you love Jesus, then you will obey and listen to his commands. Last week I shared with you, it was kind of a twofer. If the world hates you, then keep in mind that the world hated Jesus first. And I finish that with, if you have Jesus, then you have enough. And today, I want you to remember that if you abide in Him, you'll be able to bear much fruit. In my own life, there was times that I would try to accomplish things. Uh, anybody ever tried to do something on your own and it failed miserably? I'll put them both up. Because I've tried to do things under my own power, under my, you ready for it? My own authority. And it was horrible. Nothing worked. I was doing it on the outside. 
for the glory of man. And on the inside, I was doing it for the glory of, uh, well, the big boy from Illinois. I was just doing it for me. And what happened was we did not see the results that we wanted because we didn't keep God in the midst of it. In our own lives, we tried to do something on our own. And we've seen it fail. We've seen it fail time and time again because what has happened is we've got in the middle of the mess. We got in our own way for what God wanted to accomplish. Now, I know I'm speaking to someone here this morning because I'm speaking to myself. You have to learn how to stay connected to God to get everything that God wants for you. So let's read the word of God this morning. If you will stand. It's John chapter 15. All this entire series has come out of the book of John. Somebody needs to answer that. Amen. I'm not looking up. Go ahead. I didn't mean to embarrass you. In John 15, starting with verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. <coughs> Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just open our hearts, open our ears. God, you have placed this to preach this morning that we may grow. That we just don't simply exist, but we grow in the power and the understanding of who you are. So, Heavenly Father, reach down, touch lives today. Touch them in such a way that only you get the glory. And we will ask this in your Son's name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. amen. And amen. You may be seated. So if I would ask you a question, and, 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 and please just don't scream the answer, but does anybody know where our source from electricity comes from? Anybody in the house? If you're watching online this morning, you type out, where does our source for electricity come from? James comes from God. Did you read my notes? Did you? <laughs> we can say, well, it comes from a coal plant that produces. We can say it comes from the natural gas that does produce a lot of electricity. We can say, well, there's solar panels that is producing electricity. You could say those big ugly windmills 
produce energy, but nothing happens except God has provided. God gave us the coal. He gave us the natural gas. He's the one that allows sunshine to shine. He's allowed the wind to blow. So we have to come to the understanding that we have nothing without God. Now, my buddy John, one of the elders of the church, preached in my absence at the beginning of the month. And he had a great big old anvil and hammers and, a, and some of the sickles that took. Now, how many was here and saw that? Well, praise the Lord. I'm not bringing up a couple hundred pound anvil onto the platform, but I will bring something. Or should I say, I have brought something. It didn't take as much energy as John did the day before to get all that in here. But have you ever found your life like this? Say it louder, Mary. Just plugged into yourself. You're trying to get all the things that you need from what? What you can provide. And if it's plugged in this way, you can plug anything that you want to, and there's still no power coming to it. So the source for this to be... Whew, almost didn't have enough power <laughs> to get it unplugged. <laughs> it has to be plugged into what? Where the source comes from. Now, the source in this church comes from a main line that comes in. And all through the church, in the offices, in the coffee house, downstairs, there's a plug-in. That if I took this and I plugged it in, there would be power to this. And this represents us. I wish I was that skinny. <laughs> that represents who we are. And our source comes from that line, from the main line, from the very purpose, but our source is still provided. Everybody say it in unison. One, two, three. God. It all comes from God. We wouldn't have electricity if it wasn't for what God's provided. This morning, if you don't know how to get plugged in, if you're not abiding into the power source, if you are not finding yourself with an intentional purpose of making sure you have an intimate connection. And there's some days we show up and we don't get connected all the way. You ever had a sporadic fan? I had a sporadic fan the other night in our bedroom. We sleep with two fans, three fans if you count the ceiling fans. And I kept hearing the one fan go off and back on, off and back on. You know why that was? I, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. The plug wasn't all the way in the wall. And so under its own little desire to turn, everybody see how my fingers are? It's not turning real well. It's just... And what it was doing, it was ever so lightly disconnecting. Then it would find connection. It would disconnect. And I got up, and I can tell you, I hate to admit it, I have two blondes that sleep in my bed. <laughs> the gorgeous one and the fluffy one. The lab will come in and lay at our feet. And I got up, and he decided he thought he should get up. There's some days certain things just take, take our mind off of what needs to happen. So as Ace jumped on the side of the bed and with his head blocking me from getting to the connection, it took me a few moments Trying not to wake her up. I say all that 
John, isn't this so much lighter than what you brought in? I want you to take a good, quick look at that because I'm going to set it down. We cannot be connected to ourselves to find true power. Scripture says, that we have to be abiding in the power and the anointing of who Christ is. We have to remain in Christ. It's a central theme of what Christ is saying to his disciples, saying to us as we read the word of God that And unless we're connected to him, that we have this wonderful understanding that through him our power comes, we will never understand the true intimate anointing and the authority of what God wants for you and I through his son, Jesus Christ. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. This speaks to the absolute necessity of you and I and for those that are watching online. We have to stay connected. We have to stay connected. And and there's times that our connection may grow weak because there's other interference and we come and try to reconnect to God, and we deal with a 95-pound yellow Labrador trying to get in the way. Now, some of you have different things instead of a Labrador. Some of you deal with the fact that you're not being connected because there's relationships that interfere. There's, there's circumstances. There's jobs. There's, there's the mindset about just being happy and how happiness is what you're looking for. But, but true joy comes when we are connected intimately with who Christ is. It cannot be obtained. It, it's fleeting like, like a, a mist on a hot summer day. It may be there in the morning, but as the sun shines, it dissipates. If we don't know what true joy is by being connected with who Christ is, we'll never understand the purpose behind it. There's times that we just come into the house of God and we're just asking God to do something miraculous in our lives and and, and we miss the opportunity throughout the week to be connected to God, the source of all things that we have a desire of. See, when Christ said, abide in me, it's not a passive one-time thing. It's about a continual thing to be empowered by who God is. It's just not simply coming and, and finding that your connection is only on a Sunday morning. I'm not talking about just being at service, but we use Sunday mornings as that mindset, well, I've connected with God for the week. No, that's like trying to charge this. Forgot where I put it, right there. (laughs) Like we just come in, okay, we're going to plug into God this morning. But when we walk out, that's not a battery to be charged. See, there's a time in your life you just can't walk in and say, well, I'm coming here. And I got a good friend. There's a couple of them that use Wednesday night. Their Wednesday night meetings are called the recharge, where you can get recharged for the rest of the week. And I love that. But church, you realize that every morning when you wake up, you have the opportunity to plug into the power. I ain't talking about just simply be alive. I'm talking about plugging into the power of who God is. That you can find yourself being devoted in your worship. If you wait on a Sunday morning to show up in this house to worship God, you're missing some of the greatest opportunities. Because when we worship God in the most downtrodden times in our life, things happen. Our worship activates the power and the anointing of God. 
young man this morning. I told him how much I've missed his voice. In this house this morning, we all have the ability to plug into the power source when we are down and out, when we feel like we don't have another hope in the world. And once you plug into that, what happens? When you allow the, the vine to pour into us and to give us everything we have need of for the day, man, we can face it all. The heartaches, the hardships. We can face what we feel disqualifies us. We can face what makes us feel inferior. We can face those things. And, and how many of you know everybody's got an opinion? But there's only one opinion that counts. And it's God himself. But you can't hear that opinion if you're not connected to God. Am I making sense to anybody in this house? Because I stand here this morning. This whole series was about us becoming more and next week, men of God and the women that are not going, please be in this house. Please don't allow an opportunity for you not to be. Matter of fact, all the men that show up next week, I'll buy you coffee. Austin is the only one. This, this young man over here is the only one who got excited about it. Look at him. He's smiling from ear to ear. He's going to buy me a coffee? Well, for your case, I'll buy you some of those Clarence sodas. Okay. Okay? We can make that happen, right, Billy Joe? We got coffee house next week. If not, I'm going to be in trouble. We're, go We're going to have coffee ready. I'll come in and make coffee. Those fancy drinks, somebody else is going to have to come up and pony up to do that, okay? <laughs> but are you hearing me this morning? The scripture that I read to you means you can't do anything. That's what Jesus is saying. If you were looking in a hardback or a leather-bound Bible, it's in red. He says, if you're not staying within me, abiding in me, remaining in me, if you are not plugged into me, you can't do anything. You are unable to do what God is asking you to do. And in my, in my spirit, there's days that I, I pray, God, just let them see. Let them grab a hold of what your word says. Let it come alive that it becomes literally the air that we breathe, the food that we take in. Let it be a part of our being because there's a need within it. If you have not figured it out, I'm not political, but things of what we have known has been changing now for a decade. It's getting quicker. Now let me make one more statement. How many have found that time is running by like 100 miles an hour and stopping all at the same time? It's like, where's time going? And all of a sudden it's just, oh, it's lingering and it's lingering and it's lingering. Well, even the enemy's trying to confuse time in our thinking. The enemy's trying to tear down what we know is true. 24 hours is still 24 hours. 60 seconds is still a minute, but it seems like it starts and it stops in ways that we're not able to comprehend. That's a, the enemy speaking. And if we're not connected to who Christ is, we will fall prey. I shared with you earlier about some of my own difficulties trying to do something and it failed miserably. Some of you have experienced the same thing, but so we have to find ourselves intentional, not just willing, but intentional about connecting to who Christ is. And it does not, it does not help if we only try to connect on a Sunday morning. I dare say that it has to wear on God that we only connect when we're in need. That we only connect because it's a Sunday morning service.
our lives have to bear fruit. And the fruit that I'm talking about is found in the book of Galatians. It talks of love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is on display. It's showed through our character and through our conduct. Can I say that to you again? It's on display. It is showed in our character and our conduct. See, our character will walk into the room before we do. You will be known by the fruit of the Spirit that you show. I'm not talking about the spiritual gifts. I'm not talking about having that ability to prophesy or to speak in tongues or have that interpretation. I'm not talking about spiritual gifting. I'm talking about spiritual gifts. And every one of us should be producing it. Let me read them to you again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control. Brandon put up that picture of John chapter 15, verse 5. The fruit that's hanging on that, that branch... You need to know that's not a vine. That branch comes out of the main vine. What is planted into the source, the earthly source that God has provided. When Christ used this as an illustration, everyone that he was speaking to understood what he was saying. You can't produce this. If that vine's been cut. You can't produce that if the branch has been removed. That kind of fruit cannot be seen by us just simply saying, will you imagine with me the fruit that I would bear? So this morning, there are some of us here today that we're living what it says and what I've read into your hearing. It says if you're not producing fruit, God will cut you off. Scripture said, as Jesus stated, you will be cast into a fire. Again, an understanding Christ is speaking extremely plain, and he is not mincing his words when he is speaking to the disciples. And as we read it this morning, he is not mixing up his words to speak to us. So if you're not producing what God wants you to produce, be warned that he may cut you off. But if you are producing fruit and he sees within you, a greater capacity. You ready for it? The pruning feels like you're being punished. God says, I want good fruit. I want you to come out of this producing what I desire you to produce. I stated earlier, there was things that I was trying to produce within my own life. I was trying to make it happen, but it wasn't what God wanted I had someone ask me in this congregation, Pastor, why would you leave everything you had to come to pastor this church? The answer was God and God alone. When I sold my last company, I sold the last company and was on retainer at $1,000 a week just to give them advice for three years. 
I pastored the first little church, and the church could only afford to pay me $50 a week with me paying $100 a week in tithe. Why? Because God wanted something to happen. So there's days in our lives we just have to become pliable in God's hand. We have to allow him to, to be the true vine dresser in our lives. Is there something in your life and God's speaking into your heart and, and telling you, you need to give this up. You need to do away with it. That's a pruning process. And there's days that when we don't abide in him and we don't find that he is working in our lives, we struggle with it. But I'm thankful this morning for this next statement I'm thankful for when God grafts us in. Did you hear that? That God will graft us into the power and the anointing of who he is. Even that process someday that process some days doesn't make sense to us. We're happy hanging out here. <laughs> But God says, no, I got a greater place for you. See, in your lives today, you have to understand that God has his very best for you. And I've asked this before, but there's guests here this morning. What is the worst enemy of best? It's settling for good. We settle for good instead of waiting for God's best. And some days it's difficult. But as I look out across here, as I look at the camera that's going live right now, I know there's all this potential. This potential here. You haven't even started to scratch the surface of what God wants you to do. What God wants from you. Well, Pastor, I didn't sign up for all that. Well... Can I say that again? Well, I think you're wrong. Because you were bought with a price. Did you hear that? You were bought with a price. And you belong to who? To God. Jesus was your ransom. And God is the one we serve. John 10, 10, as it comes on the screen in front of you. This is what Jesus said to them. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they, that's you, that's me, that's us's. That you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. We have to continue to draw our strength and our wisdom and our guidance from who Christ is. It involves a daily surrender of our will to His as we seek to live in obedience and in his commands and follow his leading more of him and less of me. What this is, an intentional pursuit of an intimate relationship, an intimacy that only can be found when we spend time with who God the Father is through Christ, his Son. It's an intimate relationship that engages us in the studying of his word, in worship, in prayer, spending time as a family of believers, engaging in the fellowship with him and with each other. It's a true life. True life involves Christ. True life Involves a communication, us praying and him speaking to us through his word. And, and even though I'm here this morning through the, 
anointed word of, of what is being spoken from pulpits all over this world. Teachers on Wednesday night breaking bread and opening up what Scripture says and teaching and training and developing. It's an intimate relationship on our own that we would spend time before we start our day of... It's so always hectic. Isn't most of our days hectic? Don't we find ourselves rushing to get up, rushing to get showered, rushing to get that first cup of coffee? Praise God for coffee. Hectic, five minutes late getting out of the door, and all the red lights are on. My wife last week, she called me. I didn't have my phone on. I'm released from it today as well. Praise the Lord. She called Billy Joe in the office and said, my car won't start. So I went home, put it on the charger, found out it was the battery, replaced it with a brand new battery. That was the original battery from 2017 in that car. And it nearly cost $300, and that was one of the cheap ones. Last Sunday was hectic. This Sunday, someone talked about being hectic I'm thankful for hectic mornings because the enemy's trying to keep us from the glory of God let that melt around you one time they talked this morning in the meeting that worship was a struggle man I loved worship this morning I just loved it you know perfection of worshiping God is not in how the guitar may sound or the piano sound it's not what our voices it's within the heart of the worshiper I loved worship this morning if you know if you know Christ if you have Christ If you abide in Christ, those are the answers to our lives. So this morning, I'm going to ask whoever's playing the piano. Miss Mary, I know that's you. I should have just called for you. <laughs> if you'll come and play something. What I'm telling you this morning is not a promise of unlimited material blessings. Can I repeat that? Did you catch that? What I'm promising you is not a bunch of material blessings. But what the Word of God promises you, if you will abide in Him, if you will remain in Him, you, us, you watching on, we have the ability to produce much fruit. And the last thing that I shared with you in verse 8 was, for whose glory? Christ is my Father's glory. We do all this. We find ourselves being found faithful because God gets the glory. But what I have noticed, some of you have noticed, and I don't make a statement that's blanketing but what the world has to offer is taking precedence over what God is offering. Scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And everything, all that you have need of, will be added unto you. So do we see material blessings? Come on, yes, amen. God is faithful. We see material blessings in our lives, but another scripture, to gain the whole world, 
and lose your own soul. Nobody think I don't know how the scripture goes. But what does it profit you? Scripture says, what, what profit the man that gains the whole world but loses his own soul? If we are just looking to find ourselves in a place of, of gaining status or we're gaining things, and, and let me remind you where the rust and the moth comes in and destroys things. I stand here this morning, relationships have been destroyed for the lack of seeking after God's kingdom and His righteousness. Families have been destroyed because parents and children are in two different places and seeking Him and finding Him. Jobs fall apart because as men and women that work in the workforce, we need to stand firm upon the foundation of who Jesus Christ is and quit wimping out on living a life. Living a life that says to everyone, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. See, words are cheap. I probably said, I think I probably said that 5,000 times in my life. Words are cheap. You can go to Dollar Tree and, and buy a book that's almost two inches thick now for a dollar and a quarter. You used to be able to buy that for a dollar. Words are cheap. The only thing that validates our words is by the action we put behind it. I've stood and I've stated the only thing that validates the words I'm sorry is never doing it again. We come to the altars and we pray to God and we have an intention. Okay, I'm going to make myself feel good today. I know this is going to sound rough for some of you. But this altar is not an excuse station. This altar is a place that we ask God to forgive us. This altar is where we celebrate new life. This altar is where we come and sacrifice unto Him the worship that He deserves. This altar is where we come together, shed a tear of sorrow, and shed tears of joy. This altar. It's a place that we physically can see when we walk into the presence of God in this sanctuary. And I can tell you, I can tell you, I can speak. The last altar that made a difference in my life was when I was laying in a hospital bed. And I told God, this moment forward, I will never stop serving you. 33 years ago, laying in a hospital bed with 17 tubes running in and out of my body, I looked like an engine in a foreign car. Everything just attached. That's where I made a commitment. Now, I've come back to the altar because I've had to have a few tune-ups. Come back to the altar and ask God to forgive me for how I acted or what I spoke. This morning, I'm talking about freedom. Free to serve. There's an old song. It may not be old for some of you. But some of the younger ones may not. Freedom to dance. <laughs> Freedom to shout. One part of the song went about the shackles falling away. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, most of the shackles that we walk in life with is the ones that we've attached to ourselves. So this morning, I ask you to stand. I know there's all kinds of stuff going on today. Food trucks at the park. Birthday parties all over. 
Maybe you just want to go home and sit in your recliner and do nothing. But I'm asking you, will you come? Will you come in and rededicate your life to the Lord? Ask Him for forgiveness. Maybe you just need to come and have a tune-up. God, some things in me is not running right. God, I need some of my bowels adjusted. God, I just need you. I need you. As individuals come and you feel led to come and pray for them, I'd encourage you to. But I'm going to ask my wife to join me right here. We need prayer. It's harder and harder to be a pastor. You know there's nearly 1,800 pastors per day that quit. They feel alone. They feel forsaken. They feel like they don't matter. I don't want to ever be in that place been there before I don't want a t-shirt or a hat don't want it so I'm stepping down off of here if you need to go go in full respect of what's happening hold your tongue till you get outside the doors and they're shut behind you but if you want to come and pray I guarantee you this altar has been prayed over this entire week. The pews that you said have been prayed over. So I'm going to be done. Heavenly Father, move upon hearts. God, let us seek you that we may find you. God, let us find you that we may fall deeper in love with you. Have your way.